menu of summer inspired recipes and what I eat in a day, eight months pregnant. Thankfully my appetite has been really, really nice. The nausea isn't bothering me too much anymore, thankfully. So it's pretty congruent to what I would eat in a typical day, not pregnant, but of course we have some additional nutrients and additional dates and different sorts of teas that I've been drinking. But I hope you enjoy these recipes and meal ideas regardless of what season or stage of life you're in. I love summer recipes. I especially love summer fruit. That is, this is one of my favorite time of year, favorite time of year when it comes to food because we just have such an abundance of fruit in season, watermelon. I, the way I love watermelon, I can never truly emphasize how much I adore watermelon. It's so delicious. We have a fresh one to cut and yeah, I'm just excited. I stacked our full day with good inspiration and recipes that we really love this time of year and just in general. Um, we don't, I, I want to caveat, not every day I have all of these meals so perfectly planned and lined out, but I wanted to, of course, just try to give you as many ideas as possible. So we have the full day mapped out and I'm going to make everything at home today. So starting out, I actually had a dentist appointment this morning, so I ran out the door and before, it was at 8 a.m., so I wasn't super hungry before, but I just wanted to make sure I ate something. So I popped in a couple of pancakes in the toaster and had those in the car on the way. And then when I came back home, I had a yogurt bowl, which I gotta show you all the details of our yogurt bowl because this is one of our favorite breakfasts around here. My husband, Brandon, he has it every other day and I have it most days as well. It's really delicious and we make it exciting because we add so many toppings. So we start out with a base of plain Greek yogurt and then we love to add on homemade granola, which I will link the recipe to this granola. It is so divine and I make a big batch so it lasts us about a month for the two of us and then we'll also eat it plain just as a snack or with some milk it's kind of like cereal but it's so delicious and I make some different changes to it depending on what I have like this month I did pepitas so pumpkin seeds instead of sunflower seeds but sometimes I'll do sunflower seeds and I also added in some dates which really um, I bake the dates with the granola as well and really really great addition and then we love to add in some hemp seeds a flax seed coconut flakes sometimes bee pollen and some fresh fruit usually we do berries and then i have other fruit throughout the rest of the day but i forgot a crucial step to making this delicious we need to do a drizzle of honey a generous drizzle of honey to sweeten it up a bit much better such a great way to start the day and then i also love starting with my coffee i'm so thankful that i've been enjoying coffee again because it's been just a joy of the day and most of my pregnancy i did not want anything to do with coffee but now i've been enjoying my my little ration of coffee i actually i drink half of it hot and then the other half of the cup I, I poured over ice. It's so watered down at this point, but I truly savor it because it's just so tasty to me. All of a sudden, it was repulsive to me, but then all of a sudden, like a month or two ago, it just sounded delicious. And now I could drink it all day. I don't, but I could. So it's just funny how that works. But yes, a beautiful breakfast, beautiful start to the day. And now we'll get ready for lunch soon. Let's get this watermelon all cut up and nice and cold in the fridge so it's ready for snacking. So I don't know all the tricks for picking out a good watermelon. If you have tricks, let me know. But typically the one that I the one that I've learned that I try to always implement when I am sourcing our watermelon is I try to find one that feels heavier than it looks. So proportionate with the size if it looks like it should weigh more if it feels kind of light i'm like okay that's probably not a good juicy one but if it is nice and heavy and feels like there's a lot of good juice in there then that's typically what i go for and thankfully we've had a really good um season of picking out watermelons so very grateful for that and again i just 
every time I spot it in the fridge, I just like gotta have gotta have some pieces and we go through it very quickly. Um and typically, since this one's so big especially, I just cut a half-ish at a time because that way it just keeps a little fresher and doesn't become too soggy and watery. But I also love to keep the watermelon juice at the bottom of the container for like a fun, I can mix it in with some iced tea or sometimes I give it to Palmer, our dog, because he also loves watermelon. It runs in the family. Another snack throughout the day that I always gravitate to is some sort of cheese cracker or cheese puff and I'm currently snacking on these. We randomly saw this brand on Shark Tank on, out of all places but we saw it at the grocery store and this is the white cheddar one. They're essentially like the Pirate's Booty cheese puff snacks but these might be like a little bit more cheesy actually so absolutely love these. Here are all of the elements to our delicious sourdough sandwich. So first of all, we have our two slices, nice and warm. I actually warm them up because we keep it frozen. We keep all of our sourdough frozen pretty much. Like as soon as it's finished baking, I let it cool for a couple hours. And then we slice it and then pop it in the freezer. And then it's just ready to go because it's already sliced and it just helps it stay really fresh because, I mean, sourdough goes bad quite quickly since it's all natural. So the freezer has worked really well for us. And then I did a layer of avocado mayo, which I am so into right now. It's delicious. And then I love this deli mustard. This one's from Publix. Oh, it's Boar's Head though, so hopefully it would be available at other grocery stores if you don't have a Publix. But Love deli mustard. So we have a layer of that. And then let's do our avocado next. This one's a pretty big avocado, so might kind of pour out of the sandwich a bit, but that's okay. We're at home, we can get messy. Sometimes I'll smash it down with a fork if I'm feeling like going the extra mile, but sometimes I'll just use my fingers. <laughs> And it works even better, honestly. And then let's do our spinach while we have it. Try to layer some spinach leaves. This is gonna be a topple. <laughs> it's gonna topple over once we have our egg and everything too. I've been trying to just keep a little bowl of hard boiled eggs in our fridge because it's just really good protein throughout the day and for baby. So I just keep about five well brandon loves them too so it depends where we're at but i try to just have a good stash of hard-boiled eggs on hand and you hear palmer's paws coming over because he hears me crack an egg because sometimes when there's little pieces of the hard-boiled egg left on the shell i'll give it to him because it's actually very nutritious for dogs as well i feel like i should have put my cheese on the other side or on the bottom just to get to the mayo and mustard, but it's okay. This will do. The unexpected cheddar cheese, so creme de la creme. I'm just going to eat this one right here because it's going to fall off on my sandwich in an instant. Okay, and then on the side we'll have some more veggies, get all those veggies in. And whenever we buy organic carrots, I don't even bother peeling them because there's actually extra nutrients in the skin of carrots. So when they're organic, I'm just like, okay, let's just give them a good wash and call it a day. I usually do hummus as well. Well, actually, I will do hummus if I don't have an egg on it for a little bit more protein and 
If I had room, I would still add hummus. I guess we could put some under the cheese. Yeah, let's do that. I really have been into hummus as well. I used to make our own, which maybe I'll do again someday, but it's just, you know, you can only make so many things <laughs> from scratch. It's very time consuming to try to make so many recipes, but it's fun every now and then. But I also am just like, excited when I find a store-bought hummus that has good ingredients and we like it. So add a layer of hummus and then our cheese will stick to that. So that's even nice and handy for us. I'm gonna try to get out a little more of this avocado as well. Wow, that towering sandwich. This sandwich is about to become a deconstructed sandwich <laughs> any second. I really filled it to the brim, but it's one of my go-tos and I'll make different variations of it depending on what we have stocked up in the fridge. But the mustard, the mustard really does it for me and the, the cheddar cheese, just absolutely delicious. I also wanted to talk about how often it runs through my head whenever I'm making like a meal for, for us two or even just like a couple friends that come over, I'm like, wow, this this definitely is time consuming. Thankfully, I enjoy it for the most part, but it eats up a lot of your day, pun intended, to cook and meal plan and grocery shop and all of that. So I actually started a list on my phone, which I should sh find a way to share someday if you're interested, but I started, it's, it's very beginning phase, so I don't have that many so far, but, I started a list of links to like quick, easy recipes that we really love. So that way, once we have another mouth to feed very soon, we'll have that list just ready to go. So we don't even have to search out a recipe. We just know that we like these recipes and that they're relatively quick. So I'm thankful we have that started because again, I think about big families all the time or even just families where you have these kids or other family members that live with you that you need to feed and yeah it definitely it definitely crosses my mind and i'm just in awe of everyone who does that just so effortlessly so i'm trying to set us up for success but thankful we have our sourdough sandwich this will be a staple forever i think snack I made these energy balls which I really love they're really great because they are a little sweet so when I'm in the mood for a sweet treat easy to just pluck one up and munch on it and I'll link the recipe but you can again <laughs> adjust it to what you like and it's best if you have a food processor and you can kind of blend it all together but I just have a blender, which I have made them in the blender before, but it just gets all stuck and messy. So I just chop the dates as small as I can and then try to mix it with my hands as much as possible. And it works pretty well, but that's a little tidbit I wanted to share. Just like that, it's dinner time. I made a glass of iced tea to sip on while we cook. It's always more fun to cook dinner when you have some kind of fun beverage. 
I've been making sun tea, which is just like a little summer tradition. So I will insert my tutorial for making sun tea. I'm really not too fancy with it. I just pull out a glass pitcher. You do want it to be glass just because it's gonna be sitting in the sun so you don't really want like the plastic to be melting in your tea or anything like that. So you take your glass pitcher and depending on how much tea you wanna make will we'll <laughs> contribute to how many tea bags and how many cups of water, but I do a one-to-one -one ratio. So if I wanna make four cups of iced tea, I get four cups of water and four tea bags. And you can do whatever you want. Last summer, I loved hibiscus tea, so I would do that one all the time, which I still enjoy, but I've just been trying to, anytime I want tea, red raspberry or pregnancy tea. So you can choose your flavor, and then some people add in sugar while they're brewing it, but I typically just leave it in the sun for two to four hours, and then bring it inside, cool it in the fridge, and then whenever I'm ready to pour a glass, I'll pour it over ice and then drizzle on some honey and a splash of lemonade. So that's what I like to do, but it's pretty easy peasy and just feels very summery. So we have that. And here's our recipe for dinner. We're gonna make skillet, garlic, butter, chicken, and zucchini or so. Sounds delicious. I've been loving zucchini because those are also in season for summer, which I have to give a shout out to zucchini bread. I just baked zucchini bread for the first time a couple weeks ago, and I think about it often. I need to do another round. I actually have a loaf frozen in the freezer, but it's so tasty, surprisingly tasty. It doesn't sound, it didn't sound necessarily tasty to me in the past, but wow, it's yummy. Um, so I'm excited to incorporate zucchinis in this recipe. And I think the only change I need to make is, um, oh, this is a half-baked harvest recipe. Half-Baked Harvest recipe, by the way, which she's one of my favorites to find recipes. I also love Love and Lemon. So those are my two favorite like food blogs. But um, yeah, I'm gonna cook it in the Dutch oven instead of a cast iron because my cast iron will be a bit too small. So I think the Dutch oven will be a better fit. the garden to get some basil to top our orzo with and good thing I didn't need parsley because I, I don't know how I didn't notice it this morning when I watered the garden but there are swallowtail caterpillars all over our parsley which we've had in the past a couple but I've never seen this many at once I'm gonna need to go get some more parsley because <laughs> this is a lot of mouths to feed speaking of a lot of mouths to feed we have a caterpillar party over here.
full day of eating delicious, yummy things. We have a little girls' night tonight, and girls' night tonight. Yeah, I said that right. I'm getting sleepy. And I made some chocolate covered strawberries. Whenever I make chocolate covered strawberries, first of all, I love the Ghirardelli dark chocolate chips. They're so good. And then I mix in a tiny bit of coconut oil with the dark chocolate and then dip the strawberries in it. And then it's just a coconut oil evening because we made popcorn, my favorite coconut oil popcorn. It's the most simple recipe. I've been making it ever since college. I really, I almost had it every night in college, but you basically just take a spoonful of coconut oil and then add three popcorn kernels and once those pop you know your coconut oil is hot enough for the rest of the kernels you pour the rest of your kernels into your pot and I always pour in too much <laughs> and then you let it all pop and then um, sprinkle it with sea salt it's delicious so simple so easy I don't follow exact measurements kind of just depends I eyeball it I've been making it for so long now but you can kind of tweak it too if you like more oil or a little less, but it's very delicious, perfect for snacking. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a beautiful summer season and I'm excited to see you next. Bye.